Jamie, we're back. We are back. How are you? They said it wouldn't be done, but it was. <laughs> it was done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a few new coins to show off, and right. uh, we're going to talk a little bit about larger coins too afterwards, which is going to be. Yeah, uh, this is really coins. exciting today. Yeah, yeah. But uh, before we get into that, I really want to talk to you about this next coin yep. that just released from the Royal Canadian Mint. It commemorates the 150th anniversary of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. That's a it mouthful. just so happens we were talking about rocks last time, but it was rocks on fingers. fingers. Now we're actually we're moving on to a different rock. So tell me about it. So this coin is uh, it's one of the, the coolest coins that I've ever worked on. It's uh, it's a really really intricate space scene. So it actually, what we did was we worked with the Astronomical Society on this one. They uh, developed their own logo for their anniversary. And what we did was we did with um, like a, a realistic very photo-like interpretation of their logo for this coin. So you'll see that there is some engraving under this, but it's full of bright color. So you can see um, all the sort of elements of their logo that's been reinterpreted on this coin. So we have the moon, stars in the sky, we've got the Andromeda galaxy on the left, and then underneath we've got the Earth, and you can see that uh, there's sort of halo above the Earth that shows the, uh, the northern lights, and then you um, the famous Manicouagan crater in Quebec, but really the the showstopper on this piece yeah. is this genuine piece of meteorite that we've sourced for this coin. Um, it's really cool because no two pieces are alike. Each meteorite piece is different, so it really is like you're getting a, your own vintage of one on this one because they are all going to be different. What we wanted to do was get the coolest, like, sort of interesting looking pieces of meteorite so that they really jump off the coin and when you when you'll see the coin in person it's just it's incredible like the amount of relief on these pieces are just amazing um, so it combines with you know these really really bright metallic looking colors and it's just a absolutely stunning coin. Yeah, I noticed the colors actually looking at, at it uh, off the get-go like it has a kind of a metallic sheen to it. Yeah so yeah it's all sort of metallic color. to really really make the design pop and it just yeah, it's really cool. it works really really well we worked with uh, a Canadian artist named Alexandra Lafour, who herself has an extensive background in space research. Oh, cool. uh, she actually has her PhD, um, and so she was the perfect artist to work on with this. She just she really nailed the design like yeah. from the beginning. It looks awesome. Uh, w behind the scenes stuff, because mm -hmm. I'm sure this is more interesting. Uh, the meteorite. What did you do special to actually get it to fit? Because there, it seems like if if you're going to be doing meteorite for each one you'd have to make it work for each coin, right? So how did that work? Yeah, absolutely. We had to work with our supplier on this one, so we made a special little jig so that each piece of meteorite had to fit within this little jig to make sure it would actually you know, fit on the coin and within the capsule. Um, so while each one conforms to this certain jig, but we really wanted to to get like the gnarliest looking pieces yeah. of meteorite that... Well, they that are actually. If you're looking at this one here, it's pretty gnarly looking. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. General, so. so each coin comes with its own certificate, certificate of authenticity from the Royal Canadian Mint, as well as uh, a certificate uh, for your piece of meteorite. So it is a guaranteed... Space genuine rock. Space rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is always good, so... Well, that's cool. I like yeah. this one. Yeah, it's, it's one of the special ones that we get to work on every once in a while. Where Absolutely. It's, it's a little different, little... Uh, Outside of your comfort zone too, probably. Yes, right? so, absolutely. Yeah. I learned a lot on this one, and mm -hmm. we've uh, we've limited the mintage on this one to fifty five hundred, so it's it's very limited. I think it's going to be uh, quite popular. So the big question that everybody wants to know about this coin probably is: is there any tie to the UFO coin? Ah, <laughs> well, you know that they say that that one was really mm -hmm. out of this world, but I think that this one, yeah, yeah, it's got a genuine piece of meter on it, so it technically is. They might have crossed world. paths at one point, maybe. Who knows? You never know. Who knows? Okay. So uh, next, I guess we'll start talking about some uh, some big coins. Uh, yes. In general, uh, it's one of the things that we've been doing a lot in the last uh, oof, ten years or so. I think so. Uh, yeah. Kilo coins, ten ounce coins, five ounce coins. So ten kilo coins. Yes, exactly, and they're large format. Uh, even if you're thinking about the million dollar coins from mm -hmm. uh, a few years mm -hmm. back. Um, we, we get a big canvas to play on, but we don't always talk about those coins and what we can actually do in the achievements. And Absolutely. we're gonna have a special guest as well coming up so we can talk about it a little <laughs> bit more in detail. But, um, but what we're gonna do is just take a look at two of the coins that are actually out right now. And yep. uh, one of them you worked on, which is the from the Bitcoin series, which is the ever popular Bitcoin series. Yeah, yeah. I have been working on this series since I, oh gosh, 2015. So it's, it's in its, uh, you know, third or fourth year of iteration right now, but this one is really, really special um, because it's got that really nice rose gold 
selective plating on it. And what I love about these coins, working on the series is so fantastic because you know you see your change every day. Yeah. And you know, but this gives you an opportunity to really like blow up that design on a larger canvas, as you were saying, and you can appreciate every little detail and nuance in these designs and actually sort of like really, you know, bring up the engraving and the relief on these. So you get to appreciate all the little details that are on your circulation coin, but just much bigger. True, she'll never look so big, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or pink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually. <laughs> Is that accurate? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but uh, it's it's one of those things that uh, on that kind of canvas too, it just looks really cool to see something that you usually see at such a small diameter on a huge one like oh, that. Oh yeah, so, and yeah. because it's so big, it gives you like you just so many opportunities to really look at all the details and take time to really appreciate everything on this yeah, one. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've done a good job on all the Bitcoin series Thank in general. Thank you. So, Lots uh, of fun. I'm a fan of those. So, <laughs> so am I. Yeah. yeah. But tell me more about this one. This one here is the Angel of Victory. It's been out for a few months now, but uh, one of the reasons why I really love this one is uh, just in general, uh, it's based on a statue. So oof, several years ago, <laughs> I was in Vancouver and I saw the Angel of Victory statue in person. I was like, this needs to be on a coin. Uh, little did I know at, the, at that point is there's actually three different versions of this statue. Oh. Uh, which is cool. Uh, yeah. There's one in Montreal, one in Winnipeg, and one in Vancouver. Uh, they're almost all identical. Uh, there's slight variation on okay. the one in Vancouver. And we wanted to do the one in Vancouver because our artist was actually in Vancouver. Uh, funny story that I always love telling, <laughs> but I also never get the uh, opportunity to tell people about is how she got the angle on this. So Pandora Young, who's the artist on this one, I asked her to <laughs> go out and see the actual statue and I wanted her to get some reference pictures, something a little different. I didn't want it head on, I thought it was a little boring, so mm -hmm. I was asking her if there's any way she could get an angle from the top of the statue, mm -hmm. which is pretty hard to do seeing as the statue's about 20 feet tall, right? So <laughs> it's yeah. like, um, so, but she's creative. Uh, she had considered at one point renting a drone or something like that and having a camera on it. She's dedicated. Um, yeah, but what she ended up doing was is she took two sticks taped them together with some duct tape, put her camera on the top, and took a picture from the top. So she took that angle, so she was able to recreate the the, uh, the drawing based on, it's on her, that Her angle. own version of a selfie stick. It's exactly an extended <laughs> selfie stick, so with uh, duct tape, which is always, you know, the go-to kind of thing. So yeah. for, for this one, it really, it added to it, and I love that story in the background. Obviously, it's a very poignant design, too, and, and it spoke to me because of my background mm -hmm. uh, in history and uh, my love of history, I I, um, I wanted to put this on a coin because I felt that it commemorated uh, the end of the First World War so well. Okay, uh, which is what those statues did actually with CN Rails um, uh, or CP Rail, I should say. Uh, their employees they made these statues at a, d a dedication to them. So oh, nice. yeah, so it um, but it's a beautiful statue if ever. You're in the Montreal, Winnipeg, or Vancouver mm -hmm. areas. You should go and find them, uh, but also they're all in the coin, obviously. So um, and caught at an angle that you probably wouldn't be able to get in person. I like that story because it, yeah. it, it, it reflects how what we try and do here at the World Canadian Image, yeah. which is tell these amazing stories, but yeah. also cha our artists are challenged and we challenge them as well to showcase all these different uh, designs and yeah. in new and creative ways that really lend themselves well to uh, to designs. And I think Pandora really. Her selfie stick did a yeah, good job. Yeah, I think so too. And it's like, and it's challenging our artists uh, to be able to give us something a little new. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, we, we want to be able to, to give a different perspective on things, mm -hmm. literally in this case. Yeah. But uh, we wanted to give a little bit different uh, a story and feel to things. And uh, and sometimes you'll get some creative people that will be able to do something like mm -hmm. that. So. And the size of this coin, again, lends itself really well to this type exactly. of design. Yeah, it had to be on a large coin. I think uh, it's just, it gives it room to breathe and stuff yeah. like that. So, I can uh, see there's we, some really nice relief on this one. Yeah, there's some excellent relief, actually. It's uh, it's impressive. And um, the, the, um, the design that goes around is actually kind of an ode to um, the pennies of that era. Okay. So at the end of, let's say, 1918. So it, it has a bit of that feel. It's it wanted. I wanted it to look classic. Another thing that most people don't know about <laughs> is the um, the text that's there. The um, the actual text on the coin is uh, we're mimicking the text that's on the statue itself. Uh, that's actually something that most people didn't know. It wasn't yeah. available knowledge, but we wanted to get that text from there, and so the engravers were able to recreate that. That's fantastic. Really cool. That's yeah. a really nice nice touch on yeah. the coin. And I can see uh, 
Jamie really played up all the different types of frostings. You can always tell when Jamie has worked on a coin <laughs> because it's got very, very complex frosting. I go overboard. Yeah. Um, it's like a painting, right? So yes. to me, it's it's uh, it's one of those things that you you have to be able to to know when to dial it back and when to go full throttle. But this one here, <laughs> I think that there's it, it lends itself well. I have like a color coding system that I have for World War coins oftentimes, so I was able to use it here, but uh, because it's such a large coin, it kind of had room to, to, to breathe to really, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. To, to so, use all the different um, yeah. options that we have available. Yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So uh, we're going to take a second and we're going to actually speak to one of our engravers now and he'll be able to tell us a little bit about some That's other right. coins and it's, we'll continue on the theme of large coins. Fantastic. Cool. We are back and I have a special guest, Alex Tirbas. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for yeah. having me here. So you're from the engraving department, obviously, uh, engraver extraordinaire, rock stars, all of that. You're the rock star. No, you're the rock star. Okay. Um, so in general, I wanted to talk to you guys because this is one of my favorite coins of this year, which uh, I think Alex knows all too well. Um, you actually worked on this, uh, but yes. the, a fierce gaze, so the Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, yes. coin. Yeah. So. You did the engraving on this? I did the engraving yeah. on it. It was it was a fun project. Jamie kind of scouted me out for this project, and I love doing it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of detail on it. There's a lot of scientific accuracy on it. I know the uh, the vetted artwork that was chosen for this work was um, something that uh, a world a world renowned or Canadian renowned paleontologist uh, yes. produced. So it was nice to work on one of his works and just put it on a nice kilo sized large format. Uh, coin, so it was a really, real good pleasure to work on. I think this one here too, and while uh, I uh, speak, I'll take this out. You always have to be so careful with a kilo coin just because they're so heavy. And taking them out of the mm -hmm. insert is always a challenge. Yeah. But um, this one here, what, always, what struck me when I saw it in person for the first time was the fact that, I, I guess, is it a snout, is it navel cavity, or is it? So yeah. the front end there, that's actually called the pre-maxilla. Oh so boy. it's sort of like the, the beak of the, uh, of the dinosaur. So it's a front end, it's really big, and then you, know, then you have the, uh, the maxilla area, and then the nasal cavity, and, and so forth. You know? So there's a lot of, I try to show all that form in the, in the dinosaur, to just to give it a lot more depth and realism to it. Yeah. We're looking at it really close. So. When you're looking at it really close, you're going to see the fierceness of that T-Rex in your face, kind of like in Hollywood movies or anywhere sort of, you know, sort of in a virtual reality game or something like that. So you're going to see every scale. You're going to see all the serrations in its teeth, yeah. all that close-up detail, the scales, which are beautifully drawn in by Julius. And then, again, I later sort of sculpted it into 3D in a 3D digital world uh, and then eventually cut into this coin. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the little aspects that I love about it, like the broken tooth down here. Yeah. It's one of those things perfect. that, yeah, I know. You, you don't, unless you're looking up oh. close, you, you, you don't yes. notice it, but there's got a little broken tooth. When I saw that, I'm like, that's, that's great. Yeah. Because you know, it would have, it, it would have had broken to teeth and it smashed bones and, mm -hmm. and, and large sort of uh, hard exoskeletons of other dinosaurs and, and so forth. So it would have had broken teeth here and there. Alex, you sound like you know what you're talking I, about. Yeah, you, I know a little bit. Yeah, a little bit you, about dinosaurs. Yeah. Tell me uh, where where you get this knowledge from. Um, well, I, I do have a, a, a biology background actually, and then I kind of took a 180 and went into the arts and scientific illustration and and uh, computer graphics and and so on. Um, but for before the Royal Canadian Mint, I worked at the uh, Canadian Museum of Nature, yep. and there I kind of worked alongside with a lot of. Uh, paleontological uh, luminaries, paleontologists um, around the world and, and learned from them, some of the, the smartest minds in the field. And uh, I worked with them and then cr created a lot of 3D graphics and 3D uh, digital media for their work, for their research work, but also for the exhibits that yeah. are showcased at the museum too. So yeah. a little bit of both some of the entertainment side and uh, public education side and, and some of the uh, scientific stuff. So I learned a lot. and I, and now I find myself here at the Royal Canadian Mint doing this work and kind of applying that same uh, background, but in a different in a different way. So it was a blast completely. working yeah. on this kind of work, this kind of project. And yeah, yeah, great working with Jamie, of course. Yeah, well, yeah, it's always nice working yeah. with you too. Um, with with this type of coin, too, uh, one of the things that always kind of strikes me is that just with a kilo, you have such a big canvas. So. And you kind of mentioned before, you, it gives you a little bit more room to engrave Definitely. and give mm -hmm. that definition. 
Um, it has to be on a kilo, in my opinion. Oh, I, right? I, I think yeah. so too. Yeah, something like this on a on a smaller coin, like mm -hmm. a thirty-eight millimeter coin, wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in re in respect to like the the enamel eye, which is always one of the things that we would try to to um, to promote here, that we do so many different technologies. Um, do you find it difficult to do uh, enamel in general when you're sculpting something? Or? Um, no, not really. I mean, there is a prescribed sort of format on how to engrave or model an enamel eye. We have engineering specifications on how to keep it very precise. Yeah. Um, um, the, I guess the challenge would be sort of conveying something that looks realistic and in the right angle so that it's looking at you in the pr proper perspective. and. Um, but I know we um, talked about this one actually yeah. when, when we were you were working on it and you were engraving it you were talking mm -hmm. about the eye and you wanted to get the eye just right and we yeah. talked about it quite a bit so yeah, yeah. and I think it, it well it turned out beautifully but uh, yeah but the oh, eye has yeah. to be looking straight at you right yeah. so that's oh, the yeah. fierceness of the yeah. T-Rex so yeah. that's uh, important to capture that yeah it's it's cool that way um, to finish wise I mean this one's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I know it was one of the things that both you and I we were kind of we thought it it, it needed to be simple. Yeah. Um, engraving wise, uh, you know, when we, you work with a product manager, sometimes they they'll go overboard, like, or sometimes, sometimes it's good. yeah, and sometimes they'll go simple too. Yeah. Do you find that uh, I find that uh, frosting on a coin is like painting to a certain degree? It so is. It's like grayscale painting kind it of is. thing, uh, and. With something like this, I think that keeping it really simple is yes. what makes, you know, and let the engraving speak for itself. Exactly, it you said well, it. So. And yeah. Let the engraving speak for itself. Let the design speak for itself, the scale, the, the foreshortening, yeah. the, the eye, and the, you know, these, these sort of uh, lacrimal horny protrusions here. You know it all, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I don't know, I made that word up. The yeah, lacrimal yeah. part is really <laughs> horny protrusions, I'm yeah. not sure, but I think it sounds right. Cool. Um, but uh, you're right, the frosting on this, um, frosting has a way of sort of um, adding a nice character to the uh, design, but also sort of um, controlling the design too, so kind of diminishing it a little bit. Um, so because there is a lot of detail and a lot of specularity and shiny points, the frosting sort of just sort of helped hone it down a bit, um, but it adds a warmth, a, a nice character to it. and and uh, enhance the sort of detail where you want to be enhanced and, and mute back detail where you want it to be sort of controlled. And this one here specifically, the, the one that strikes me the most, and by the way, it's really hard to hold up a kilo coin. Yeah, for that long. long. Um, uh, the, the, the point that always strikes me is the teeth. Like it, the, you've got the shine in between the teeth, right? So uh, that sort of um, background. Yes. And then the teeth have a different frosting on it, which is, it, it makes them stand out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, still they've got that so smooth look a to them. Smooth right? contour, yeah. nice, uh, nice sharp uh, edged razor blades in a sense with yeah. these very small little serrations on it, which you would find on these type of dinosaurs, these fine little pointed edges on the backside of the, uh, the teeth. Um, that's engraved in there. So you. You wouldn't be able to do that on a very small coin, but on a kilo, you can capture all that sort of finer nuances of a T-Rex. Yeah. So, well, you did a yeah. fantastic job on well, it. Yeah, and you know I'm a fan of it. Uh, uh, when we were working on it last year, because it does take quite a long time to actually make coins, yeah. um, we we were both very excited about this one. Yeah. So yeah, good. Thanks. Well, thanks well, for well, coming on, yeah, and uh, we, uh, we had a good time, and yeah. uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Thanks.